Hello, I'm Mr. Shaste, and today we're going to be focusing on the 180 students. We're going to do some jury charge, and we may do it in a few patterns that you haven't seen before, and hopefully I'm going to give you some good tips. The only real thing that we can go over, though, as far as general rules, is the big four rules of writing correctly. Write clean. If you don't write clean, you're not going to get all the points that you should on a test. You're not practicing what you were taught in theory. The one skill that you had when you entered skill classes, speed classes, was you could write clean. So make sure you do. Another one, do not carry words. That means don't trail the speaker by an awful lot. Everybody should be able to eventually develop the skill to carry only about three words at a time or less, even the very high speed people. Now if you never fall way behind, you're never in panic mode and you're never going to suffer a huge drop. Okay, now those are the first two rules and actually those are the only two rules. The other two rules that I give out they're an explanation. They're a, 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 a way to follow the first two rules. Okay, the third one, drop quick. Your choice is use a brief, write it out, or drop it. Don't sit there in front of it and just pause. Make a choice and move on. Now, if you can't use the brief and you can't write it out and stay up, then your choice is to drop it. It's too hard to do. Drop it. Make sure you stay up. Okay, keep the hands moving. That's the last big rule. Now that's a funny thing. A lot of our problems stem because we try and move our hands too fast. We think that since we can write some words really fast, we should write all words really fast, and that's just wrong. If your hands are moving, let them go. They're going as fast as they can. If you force them to go any faster, they're going to start having mistakes. Now if you're completely stopped, you got problems. You should be able to be able to keep your hands moving, writing something. Your, your brain works so fast. If your brain can't send down signals in time to keep your hands moving, we have a problem and we're going to have to correct that. Okay, now let's jump right in. Now what I picked here as far as the drill material is something that was on one of my CDs at buysteno.com. Now I'm sure it hasn't been dictated this way. <laughs> I never know which patterns I'm going to use when I sit down to dictate. I look at the material and I say, well, it looks like we should do this kind of drill with this type of material. Okay. You should have done finger drills by now. Maybe you did some silly sentences, some stroke strengtheners. Maybe you did some low speed material but you should be all warmed up and ready to rock. Here we go, 140. Ready? Members of the jury panel, you have been selected and sworn in as the jury in this case. If you have been on a jury before, okay, how many sloppy words did you write? I know, this is new to you and it could be confusing. I'm supposed to be going for a 180 uh, class and here I am dictating 20 words at 140 and I'm stopping you. How many missed strokes did you already have? This speed should not be pushing you. You should be writing really clear. This is easy stuff. You should be writing clear. You really shouldn't have any more than maybe one missed stroke. This is easy stuff and only at 140. Okay, let's see if we can go a little further this time. Ready? Members of the jury panel, you have been selected and sworn in as the jury in this case. If you have been on a jury before, you may have an understanding of what will be required of you. But you must be open to the rules and guidelines that you must use to come to a decision in this case. First of all, you should not be under the assumption that I want you to decide this case for or against either side. Stop writing. Okay, after I'm done the last word in a dictation, you should not be writing that much. You shouldn't be carrying that much. Now this is easy stuff. 
At the end, that I want you to decide this case for or against either side. Where's the problem? Nothing. You should be all caught up. You should be writing clean. Now, people that carry too much, after a half a minute, they're already carrying a lot. Now, they don't start getting spanked usually until it's about a minute into the drill or the test. That's when they can't hold on any longer. But by a half a minute, they're already carrying considerable. Okay, we're only doing 140. Why, if you're in the 180s, would you be carrying at all on this easy material? Why? Write clean. Do not carry words. Drop quick. Keep the hands moving. Alrighty, let's see what we can do. You ready for this one? Members of the jury panel, you have been selected and sworn in as the jury in this case. If you have been on a jury before, you may have an understanding of what will be required of you, but you must be open to the rules and guidelines that you must use to come to a decision in this case. First of all, you should not be under the assumption that I want you to decide this case for or against either side. Further, you are not bound or required to decide any question of facts or facts in issue merely in accordance with the testimony of a large number of witnesses. How many words are you carrying? Don't carry words. I went faster to simulate the hard part on the test. On a test, of course, they're going to stay um, dictating at the same speed, but they're going to throw in some difficult words. Do not carry. I don't care how hard it is. Follow another rule. Drop quick. Stay up. Stay up on top of the dictation. Alrighty. Let's try a different part here. Okay. There's two words in the beginning of this one that I don't like all that much because I too stroke them. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Now, if you understood what, I, what you did earlier, you're writing clean, you're keeping up, you're doing everything as, as well as you possibly can. This is a little harder than the one that we just did. Plus, I'm going to go faster. This is 200 words a minute. Yes, I am focusing on the 180s. 140 to write clean, 200 to write speed. Put it together, you'll be writing a good, strong 180. Okay, speed drills must be short, and this will be short. At 200, ready? You will have to come to a decision as to multiple charges and multiple defendants in this case. You may find that one defendant is not guilty of all charges and the other defendant is guilty of some or all of the charges brought against him. Each verdict that you bring, therefore, should be independent of the other. For example, you cannot find one defendant guilty of a crime simply because you have found that the evidence proves that the other defendant is guilty of that crime. All right, that's 27 seconds. That's not a bad amount of time to go on a speed drill. Make sure you're not carrying much at the end. Make sure you're writing really clear. If you're not getting points, why are you doing it? Make sure you're always under control. If you can keep your hands going, if you can keep them from just getting all confused and stopping dead on the keyboard, those hard parts won't be so bad. Do the best you can at all times. Don't try to be the best person in the world right now. Try and be the best you with the skills that you have. Do the best that you can with the skills, with the knowledge, with the experience that you have. Go into every drill trying to do the very best with what you have and be happy with it. And if you do that each day, you'll write better and clearer and stronger and you're going to like stenography school. It's not a bad profession. It's not a hard profession. But it does require that you understand what you're doing so that you can correct it, so that you can join the ranks of the well-paid people out there. Okay, how about one more drill? One more drill. Okay, this is a funny one. This is a funny one. Okay. Sometimes I tell you what's coming, sometimes I don't. This time I'm not. Let's see if you can keep up. Can you follow the four rules and keep up? Ready? Evidence has been introduced for the purpose of showing that the defendant acted 
in such a way as to cause what we call aggravating circumstances in this case. If you find that these aggravating circumstances are true, you must consider them in your verdict, even if you feel that the resulting verdict would be more severe than you originally thought. At the start of this case, we originally had three defendants. One of those defendants is no longer on trial. He will be tried later before another judge and another jury. Well, I suppose that he may come before me again, but you will not be on the jury on that trial. When you finish this case, you will be released. Let me just say that you may not use the fact that he is no longer on trial here today. And there you go. We started at 120. We ended at double that. Did you write clear all the way through? Don't give me excuses that you're not writing clear because it's too fast. You can still write clear. I control the speed of the dictation. You control your hands. Okay, how many words were you carrying? If you're a big carrier, you got lost and you were dropping 10, 15 words at a time at the end. Yeah, don't be lying. Don't carry words. Follow step three. Drop quick. Look how fast that got. Did you have any possible way of getting it? Why weren't you dropping words left and right? Look for the easy words. Drop the hard ones. Aggravating circumstances. Either you got a phrase for that booger or it needs to go out in the trash can. This was too fast. You have to make emergency decisions. What can you write at that point in time? And did you keep your hands moving? Or did you seize up? Did your brain just seize up because it was too much? Did you go into overload and your hands are going and producing no work at all? Okay, which of the four rules did you violate first? Here's the rules again. What did you violate first? Write clean. Do not carry words. Drop quick. Keep the hands moving. You should be able to survive any drill by following those rules. You should still be able to get the amount of words that you should be able to write at your level, no matter how fast or how thick the dictation is. You should know what to do. You should develop that skill. We'll talk later another time. For now, that's all we got. Hope it helped a lot. See you next time.